Hi guys, welcome along to another edition of Build With A&E. In this episode, I'm gonna be fitting skirting, architraves, and a door to our guest on suite bathroom. The methods done here are gonna be carried out throughout the rest of the house. So this is just a general insight into what we'll be doing across the whole building. So stay tuned and enjoy the show. So this room upstairs now has all been plastered and is now ready for the second fixed carpentry. So my job is to now start getting some skirting round. So now I need to get on and get some skirting and architrave on, basically, to start getting this finished. But before I do the architrave around this door, I need to get some slamming strips sorted out. So as per here, just to make the door into a door casement, I've bought myself some PSE. I've now got to rip that down in the planer. So we will be able to get them strips on here. And then once that's on, I can then get the architrave on this side. The architrave can go on this side already without the slamming strips, like so. But if you imagine, once I put the slamming strips on here, it then narrows this opening up slightly. So it's going to affect the thickness of the line in here. So if I fix the architrave on before putting the slamming strips on, my architrave will finish here, and then the slamming strip will actually finish past it. So I need to make sure I get these on first. So I'm going to go down to the workshop and get them run down. So I'm down in the workshop, and we're going to use the thickness now just to reduce the thickness of the PSE. If you remember me mentioning, this is a 20 mil PSE, and I need to reduce this now down to 12 mil. So that will be the perfect size for our slamming strips around the door lining. So I'll get this cranked up now. I've got my dust extractor on, so I'm nice and safe. Also my ear defenders, because this beast is loud. So I've got my piece of timber now, which is gonna make my slamming strips. Took quite a while because I had to take quite a lot off. They're now down to 12 mil, which is exactly the thickness I want for my slamming strips. So now all we'll do is go upstairs and measure it. Boop. Boop. As if by magic, the magic of YouTube, I'm now upstairs. So what we're gonna do, like I mentioned, is measure it for these slamming strips. So obviously we have our door line in here. Our door will sit in here. There's the hinge side there. Okay, so what we need to do to get the right size of these slamming strips, we need to take the thickness of the door and take that off the overall width of this lining. So if you look here, we have 130 mil. So let's go and have a look at the new door. There is a new door going on here. Thickness of this door, I say new, it's, it's new to the house, is 40 mil. Yeah, so 130 minus 40 equals 90. So we need to rip these slamming strips down now to 90 mil, all the way around the perimeter, and we can get them stuck on. Cool, so back down into the basement. So now I have all my slamming strips cut. I need to cut them to size. I've cut this one down. This is a 692. You need these to be pretty snug in here. So there's the head in there straight away. And then I need to get the two legs cut and we're good to go. I won't permanently fix these at the minute. These will just be temporarily fixed in just until we've got the door in, just to make sure that everything's bang on where we need it to be. Because the last thing I want to do is get these permanently fixed in and then have to rip them out because there's an issue with the door fitting or something like that. So just a few temporary nails in there. We'll get everything in place. Cool. So as usual, set the time lapse and you can watch me do it. So our slamming strips are now on. They are only temporary, like I've mentioned, but they are nicely in place, nice and tight as well. Good snug fit, which is exactly what you want with something like this. The last thing you want is for it to be shrinking and causing cracks everywhere and gaps and all that sort of stuff. So a nice snug fit in there, that's exactly what we want. I've got my nice margin now, so my door will sit perfectly within the boundary of the casement. So yeah, next up, architrave on on both sides, and then we can get the door on.
So all the slamming strips are on. I haven't fully put the nails in yet. Just in case this does need to move, it should be completely fine because everything's been measured up. The door shuts nicely as well. And a nice even margin all the way around the door, which is exactly what we want. I did have to plane this down quite considerably, this leg here, because there is a bit of a twist in the door just to get it to fit flush. I just needed to do a bit of adjustment, which you just saw. Um, but yeah, that's it, it's all in. So now I'm gonna get on with the architrave. These architraves actually fit flush with the edge of the lining like this. So in a modern house, you would actually have a shadow line like that. So you'd have probably a three or four mil gap there, just here, whereas these sit flush like that. So what that does mean, it's gonna cause no issues everywhere else, but when we come in here, we have this. Obviously we've got the hinges and as they're notched into the frame, this will then stop us getting our architrave right to the edge. You can see that little gap there. So what it does mean is I've marked up here where the hinges are. So I'm gonna now have to just notch slightly out of this architrave just to make sure that sits tight in there against the edge and it is uniform all the way around. So I'm just gonna get my coping saw now Run that down there and then that'll sit in nicely. So I've just cut these out, the little notches for the hinges. And what I've also done is cut a bit of a chamfer on them as well. So they're slightly angled in. The reason being that the hinges are obviously rounded. So they'll just sit in snug nicely behind them. So let's just go and try, see if it fits. There we go. Beautiful. So that sits nicely up to the edge of the lining. And that one as well. Nice, okay, so I'll get this fixed in and then we'll get the head and the other leg on. So that's it, the outro is all on, the door's in. We may have to do some adjustment with the bottom of the door later. I'm going to leave that until the floor is sanded, because obviously that will change the level of the floor, so we don't want to go chop it off the bottom of the door, and then the floor will be lowered slightly, and then you end up with too big a gap. So for now, on this side anyway, that's, that's it, that's done. Uh, you've noticed all the pin, you may have noticed, sorry, that all the pins are still sticking outside, that's just in case we ever need to move anything at the minute, but they will all be obviously punched in, and then, what I need to do now is go to the other side of the door. So next up is the skirting. Basically I've started to skirt around here, I've put my little piece in over there as well, and now all I need to do is just scribe this internal corner in. So that is what I'm gonna do now, just here. So what you need to do to scribe a corner in is basically cut this angle here at 45 degrees, and then that gives me then the mark that I need to cut round with my coping saw, and basically miter into that corner. I'll show you exactly what that means in a minute, but what I'll do is just get this cut, show you the process of that, and then show you how it goes in. Because I've got a straight cut here, I'm just going to use my Japanese saw for that rather than a coping saw. The coping saw is better suited to going around corners and stuff like that, so it's a bit of a waste of time trying to cut that with it, so I'll just get my Japanese saw out and do that. So what I mean by scribing in is that basically when this meets a corner that comes across here, perpendicular to it, we need this angle here to curve over the top like this. If we just to put them up, it's going to crack down the middle, it's going to just pull away, it's going to look really unsightly. So we cut this away, and then that basically hooks over this, and this profile here locks into this profile here. Ideally, you'd have a workbench to work on rather than just like a pit. Uh, our workshop is right down on the building, so it's a bit of a trek. So, for stuff like this, it's easy just to do it right next to where you're actually working. So cut that at the 
slight angle, cut this into here as well, and then I'm going to use my coping saw then to finish this off around this edge here. Use my coping saw just to basically go around this. Again, you're keeping a slight angle in, slight camber at the back of the cut. So this top piece here, you can obviously see the top of this, so you want to make sure this is square here. Yeah? Don't put it back at an angle. Otherwise, you will see there was a gap there. So keep this as square as possible. This is all for this. There we go. So, off with my little piece of off-cut to it. And you can see that is good. A nice, even joint all the way around. There's a little bit of a gap there, but there's nothing to write home about at all. Fine tuning around these edges and get that end perfectly. But overall, that's pretty good. I'm very happy with that. Awesome. So let's get this cut down to size then and get it in. So that's it. I've now shown you exactly how the architrave and the skirting will be carried out throughout the house. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like, comment and subscribe. You've been watching me, John, from Build With A&E. Until next time, stay safe.